Hi everybody, it's Mike from here, the Watchman. We're going to do another Watchman report live here from Dallas, Texas. And today I've got one of my favorite speakers. He's been with us since the very beginning, very loyal to here, the Watchman, and that's Mr. Russ Dizdar. Uh, he has a radio show called Shatter the Darkness. His website is shatterthedarkness.net. I think yeah. it is. Yeah. And Russ, thank you for joining sure. us today. Great. What do you think? We're here in Dallas, and so far, what's your feeling, and what do you, what's in your heart about this yeah. conference? Well, you know, we knew it ahead of time. We knew that, that it was going to be explosive. We saw what, we, what happened last year. And then, and just praying about all this, and praying about it, and of course, we had difficulties concerning it uh, that happened to us about getting here. It became a concern. So, you know, we put a lot of prayer into it, and we just knew no matter what, we had to be in Dallas. What was going to happen here was going to be phenomenal. Obviously, it's packed out, obviously. But I've already met individuals that want prayer, that want so many things to happen. Um, I bet so many people that have traveled from Hawaii, other places, um, just to be here for this, for this event. So, and what I'm seeing already from the speakers and everything else, powerful. I mean, just... It's life changing. It, lives will be changed. Lives will be altered in all this. Um, believers are going to be called. Who knows? Even the you know as far as worldwide, you know, uh, as they listen. So, we've asked thousands of people to pray, just to intercede that in this little couple of days, that a massive, massive, the hand of God would move in a in a very powerful way. And so we want to see, like last year, you know, many people get saved. Many people get, you know, we're going to do prayers and deliverance and sessions with people left and right. we got appointments tonight, appointments tomorrow. So we already know we're going to see what the Lord's going to do there. People have traveled just to come for prayer. So in all of this, and, uh, you know, I've listened, I listened to Carl Gallops a little bit ago. Coach was just on right now. Just shaking the place up. And uh, the message couldn't be, I mean, just is so strong and clear so I, I think it, it all lends itself to revival. It all lends itself to, to um, seeing believers really becoming aware of um, the hour that we live in and how late it actually is, too, and what needs to be done. And out of all of that, how to break away from all the fear. Um, you know, no matter what we feel like sometimes, whether we're surrounded or, you know, things are happening, um, we are called to be on the field, and the hand of God will be there with us in extraordinary ways. Um, last year, there was some kind of threat or whatever else, and, and they wanted to shut the whole thing down, mm -hmm. and That's it went right. forward. And, and many people got saved, and I, I can't tell you how many people that got prayed for, some have showed back up this year just because of the kind of prayer and, and, and freedom and, and what occurred to them last year, and I was amazed. So um, we're going to see some great things happen this weekend, um, and there's been there's been without question opposition along the way. Oh, there's there is no question, folks. I, I don't think you truly understand how the enemy tries to divide us and and break us up. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, Begley said it best: first the enemy will attack you, then the enemy will attack your friends. And when that doesn't work, your enemy will get your friends to attack one another mm -hmm. to try and bring you down. And we've experienced that. As recent as like, oh, a month ago, we, we were receiving threats and all that. But, you know, we don't worry about it. I, I think that Russ just last week had someone issue them a threat that said, hey, we're waiting for you. But, you know, it doesn't stop us, does it, Russ? Because why? Well, I mean, there's no question... Um, the promise of God's protection, Psalm 91. Uh, we, we see God you know, intervene in the Old Testament, New Testament. But we also know that um, you know, we've been on the field years and years and years. And we you know engaging some really uh, bad folks in the area, criminals and so forth. And you know people always ask, do you carry weapons and things like that? And I go, well, sure, I have no problem with all of that. But, and, and yet the good thing is, I could say out of 35 years, being on the field, being backwoods, being engaged, witnessing on the streets, witnessing in bars, being at conferences like this where there's been threats at other conferences, um, God has uh, been the, he has protected us. He has guarded us. He's, and we did, yeah, we just got a, a threat. Uh, some folks were saying, we're coming after you. We are coming for you, Russ. Um, so whatever that means. And I had somebody from Boston send a picture. Uh, I didn't show it to you, but it's just a, of our, 
ritualized guy with a with the skin of a wolf mask strange but a warning sent to us uh in latin no no oh, less. Wow. um in latin the the english means uh a man is a wolf to another man meaning you know they're coming behind the scenes they're going to come they're going to be a predator and come after us and whatever so you know we've had people come to our house we've had people do a number of things so we've uh uh, had a bayonet slashed at our head from an uh, individual once in our in our office one time. Um, number of things, a lot of different things along the way, um, but threats are what they are. And for anybody that receives threats as believers, I think Nehemiah chapter four, when they were threatened, they were threatened uh, to the point of death. Even they're going to they're coming for them. They're, they're, they were mocking them. They're going to come for them. Uh, the response of Nehemiah was immediate to stand before the people, to stand before God, to quote scripture, and I mean, and just to declare the hand of God in the midst of them, and they completed the work. They went ahead, completed the work, got the work all done, and building the wall. So uh, I think under anybody under any kind of threat, uh, we need to learn how we can be, you know, become fearless and and just, you know. Be able to stand and and then speak to those that do the threatening at times. Sometimes, you know, you got to speak to the enemy and and, and speak to them. And, and Saul of Tarsus was a threat. God knew how to engage him and bring him down. And um, that's what we hope, first of all. Um, God knows how to deal with these, these threats along the way. He knows how to give us empowerment from the Spirit of God. And he really knows how to make believers literally fearless. And, and so, really... When, as dark as it gets, the hope is in the Bible. It's in God. And, and that's where we run. That's where we go to get our strength. Well, and you look at the world right now, and I mean, we're going to run after drinking, how long, you know, drugs, food. I mean, the world is in a, they're crying. The world is crying. They, they are, they are, they are like, like, what in the world is going on? The confusion, the war, the bloodshed, uh, the moral decadence, and, and all the other stuff. So the world, like Mr. Putin said to a national, global, in a news media, you know, conference, uh, Putin comes forward and says, "The world is afraid. The world is afraid. We must create a global security force." Here it comes. So there it goes. So there's a reason why, and I'll say it tomorrow night too, why there's this push to make the world filled with violence and turmoil and so forth. It's part of that. Where the world begins to say, we, you know, we need something different. So the world's searching. As believers, can we have peace like a river? You better believe it. Can we really know it with confidence? Look how Stephen, when he was being stoned, stood uh, in, in the book of Acts. So we have supernatural help inside the Spirit of God, our relationship with Christ, the hand of God. Um, so I believe that uh, in the world that we live in, we have the ability to warn the world. They haven't seen the worst yet, but we also have the ability to speak to the world about a gospel, about a savior, an indestructible salvation, an indestructible hope, and um, and and how to know why, why it's all coming down. Um, that's that's needed in this hour of confusion because the enemy is going to use the confusion to thrust the propaganda. Globalism, you know, Luciferic globalism, and that, that all lends towards the end, the Antichrist. But we, uh, when seeing radical, I mean, everything's radical on the, on the field, like David, instead of staying in the rocks and just protecting ourselves, he ran. He ran. He went after Goliath. So that's the nature of the body of Christ. That's where empowerment and the hand of God Let's go after it, and um, and and we'll see the hand of God in our lives. And I think it's the other side that needs that needs to be worried, and, and not us. Amen. Well, listen, folks. Russ will be on tomorrow evening. You don't want to miss the message that he has to deliver. Uh, he's been he's been through it. He's been in it. He's boots on the ground, and he's taking his time and at great peril to get here to this conference to deliver the message to you. Go to hearthewatchmenmen.com, click on the, the purchase live stream ticket. It's $39, you get the, the conference for live, 
but you also get to watch everything for thirty days. so whatever you've missed already you can get and have and watch and study for thirty days. russ, thank you so much for joining us today, for being at the conference we're just so blessed to have you here. good stuff. god bless. thank you.